The wind turbine tech occupation has got to be one of the hottest and most talked about occupations out there. There's over a thousand occupations in the United States, and this one has the highest growth rate among all of them. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons of trying to become a wind turbine tech in 2021. Later in this video, we're going to talk about compensation. We're going to talk about jobs, education, and more. But first, what is a wind turbine tech and what do they do? Wind turbine techs, also known as wind techs, inspect, diagnose, and repair wind turbines. A lot of people don't realize this, but wind turbines are continually struck by lightning. Fires can occur within them, and they do lose integrity over time. Every wind turbine needs proper maintenance, which includes resolving electrical issues, mechanical issues, and hydraulic issues. If you enjoy working with your hands, being outdoors, and repairing things, this might be a great occupation for you. Although this occupation is definitely not for people that are afraid of heights. One of the main attractions to becoming a wind turbine tech is the low barrier to entry, even compared to some of the other trades. There is no certification or license that's mandatory to become a wind turbine tech. This is unlike, say, trying to become a plumber or electrician, where you actually have to get a certain license approved by the state. There are licenses out there that'll help you get employed, but they are not mandatory. In fact, according to the Occupational Information Network, about 29% of wind turbine techs just have a high school diploma. About 34% have a high school diploma plus some kind of certificate, and about 22% have some college. So low barrier to entry is definitely a plus for people trying to become wind techs. One potential con is because this is such a young occupation, unions really haven't moved into the wind and solar occupations. In fact, only between four and 6% of wind techs are unionized. Unions are a great way for people to organize and demand certain benefits, such as pensions, more paid time off, and better health care. But even with the lack of union representation, wind techs are doing pretty well financially. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics in 2020, the average base salary for a wind tech, and this is assuming just 40 hour work weeks, no overtime, was $59,340. And this is more than say welders, solar panel installers, HVAC techs, and auto mechanics. So despite the vast majority of wind techs not being in a union, they're definitely doing pretty well financially. And they have been experiencing pretty solid wage growth over the years. In 2012, the average base salary for a wind tech was $48,320, assuming 40 hour work weeks. This rose to $59,340 in 2020. So on average from 2012 to 2020, they're seeing about $1,200 per year in wage growth. So wages for wind techs are actually rising a little faster than a lot of the other trades. If you were to project this average yearly wage growth into the future, by 2024, the average base salary for a wind tech would be $64,238. So it would potentially rise to around $72,000 per year, assuming 40-hour weeks, by 2030. And there's even better news for wind techs. Unlike other occupations where all the high-paying jobs are near metro areas that are extremely expensive, such as like New York City, San Francisco, and uh, D.C., Wind techs, the highest paying places tend to be in somewhat rural areas. In fact, the government found that the highest paying state for wind techs was actually the state of Pennsylvania. I can't think of any other occupation where the highest paying state is the state of Pennsylvania. The average base salary in Pennsylvania was recorded at $65,440. And this is followed by the state of Colorado, Iowa, Kansas, and New Mexico. So it seems like the highest paying states are also, also have the lowest cost of living. And up to this point, we've been assuming 40 hour work weeks. Wind turbine technicians have the opportunity to, to work overtime. And if they do by law, they have to be paid time and a half. This is unlike some other occupations such as teaching, lots of uh, occupations in the legal industry and restaurant managers, and a lot of sales roles. They typically have to work a lot of unpaid overtime. This occupation is not like that. Typically you'll get time and a half, but in certain areas of the country, you could get double time as well. The other thing that's really surprising about wind turbine techs, and this is also straight from the government, is the fact that about 14% of them are self-employed. This could be either they own their own company or there's some kind of 1099 contractor who's contracted out to different uh, companies and work sites. And this is actually much higher than a lot of the other trades. When you compare, say, the number of self-employed wind turbine technicians against, say, aircraft mechanics, it's way higher. In fact, there is no other trade that has such a high proportion 
of self-employed people within it. So those are two really big advantages for wind turbine techs, high percentage of self-employed, and they have the potential to do overtime and overtime is most likely available because what we're going to get into next is the jobs market. This is a great time to become a wind turbine technician because there is has been really great job growth over the years, and this is expected to continue going into the future. According to the government in 2012, there was 3,200 employed wind turbine technicians. This rose to 5,860 in 2020. So the number of employed wind turbine technicians has almost doubled in just eight years. Very few occupations are growing this quickly. And if you were to compare the job growth estimates for wind turbine techs against other trades, other occupations where people like to work with their hands, be outdoors and repair things. It's crazy. The government's estimating a 61% growth in the number of wind turbine tech jobs over the next 10 years. And this is the highest on the list. But there is one caveat to this. This is a very tiny occupation. There's only 5,860 employed wind turbine techs in the workforce right now. So this is a very tiny, small niche occupation compared to the number of employed electricians, auto mechanics, welders, plumbers, HVAC techs, all those occupations have hundreds of thousands of people in their prospective workforces. Only about 6,000 employed for wind turbine techs. And the main disadvantage of this is the fact that with small niche occupations, you have to live in very specific places in order to be employed. This is expected to change going into the future, but one of the main attractions of becoming a wind turbine tech, especially if you enjoy living in rural areas, is there might be potentially be plenty of opportunities in places that really don't cost very much to live in. The government has some data on this as well, where all the wind turbine techs are employed. According to the government, the Lone Star State, the state of Texas, has the greatest number of employed wind turbine techs. There was an estimated about 1,400 employed wind turbine techs in the state of Texas alone. Almost 25% of the entire workforce of wind turbine techs is in Texas. So a huge proportion of work should be available in the Lone Star State. It's actually followed by the state of California, which had about 610 employed in 2020. So that covers government numbers. Another way to really determine the demand for people in a given occupation is to look at different job boards. I typically use Indeed.com, LinkedIn, and Glassdoor.com to look at the number of job postings. And then we can compare it against the number of employed and see if an occupation has a lot of demand for people at this moment in time. On Glassdoor.com, I found 474 job opportunities for wind techs in the United States. Meanwhile, on Indeed, 752. And LinkedIn had a staggering 36,100 job postings related to wind turbine technicians. So when you compare the number of job postings against the number of employed, it actually looks really favorable for wind turbine techs. There's a lot of demand for people in this occupation right now. And given the low barrier to entry, it really isn't that hard to enter this occupation. And the number of job opportunities on LinkedIn, there might be a lot of garbage job postings that aren't related to wind turbine techs. I'm not really sure there's actually 36,000 job postings for wind turbine techs. There's probably you know, those three keywords in the description, and then it's just pulling it up. But uh, either way, on Glassdoor, Indeed, it's a lot of job postings compared to the current workforce right now. So as you can see, this is a pretty exciting occupation for a particular type of person that's not afraid of heights, that enjoys repairing things and being outdoors. I've seen some wind turbine tech videos. It is gorgeous. When you get on top of these 350 foot wind turbines and you look out, it is just gorgeous. Wind turbine techs have excellent job growth potential and excellent wage growth potential over the next 10 years. The big con is it's a tiny occupation and jobs are going to be probably in specific rural areas and they might be on the coasts eventually when offshore wind turbines become more of a thing. If you enjoyed this video, definitely check out my electrician and or plumbing video. I go over the same kind of factors that I went in into this video for those as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.